Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Remote controlled helicopters, or drones as most people call them these days, are definitely not a new thing. However, more recently they've dropped in price and increased in quality enough for the common man on the ground to buy and use. In this video we're going to take a look at one particular drone, the DJI Mavic Air. Instead of doing an in-depth review of all the different settings and features this drone has, all the technical specs and all the different ways you can fly it, we're going to focus on one single thing instead. Is this a good beginner drone? In other words, if you've never really flown a remote controlled flying vehicle, is this a good place to start? First things first though, a huge shout out for making this video a reality goes out to Cyberphoto in Umeå, Sweden. I've shopped from them extensively for the last 15 years. I even bought my first DSLR camera from them. I lost count how many rolls of analog black and white film I bought from them through their store when I was living and studying in Umeå. They're a company I have no second thoughts about supporting. And if you're in Sweden and you need to order photographic gear or other related material, they are the people to turn to. They're knowledgeable in the trade and amazing to deal with and I am overjoyed in being able to partner with them in the making of this video. Alright, let's get on with getting this thing out of the box and see what we have to deal with. Oh, there it is! Just what I ordered! Thanks Cyberphoto, I always enjoy these extra little gifts. Anyway, back to the unboxing. The actual Mavic Air box is a pretty neat affair. There are two versions you can get, the regular version and what's called the Fly More combo, which comes with some extra bits and bobs. This box contains the Fly More combo and has inside it a nice case to hold all the bits for traveling with your drone. There's also a smaller hard shell case in the box as well as a compartment which we will dig into later. Inside the small hard shell case is the actual DJI Mavic Air drone, neatly folded together looking quite small and dainty. Can this really perform like how it's advertised? This small case is very handy though if you want to just throw it into your own bag together with the remote control and head out into the skies. If we open up the bigger carrying case we find that other necessary bit to get this off the ground, specifically the remote control. The case also contains a box with some necessary cabling as well as two extra sets of propellers in case of careless flying or accidents. In the bottom you will also find two extra batteries. And while we will get into the importance of batteries later, I can say already now, this is probably the most important thing in the Fly More combo. There is also a dedicated charger, meaning you don't have to charge your batteries by plugging in your drone, which if you have more than one battery comes in quite handy. For traveling or carrying, the drone fits snugly on top in the case, with the remote stuck down the side. The last little box contains just a plethora of manuals for every little bit and bob of the package, as well as something which could come in quite useful if you're a beginner flyer, propeller guards. While getting an unfamiliar piece of equipment, especially one as expensive as this, can be quite daunting, I have to say that DJI has really done their homework in onboarding you on this drone. Everything on the drone and the remote control is clearly labeled with step-for-step -step instructions for how to fold out the arms of the drone and get it prepared for your first flight. It does fold together rather neatly, I have to say, with the back arms folding down and around to lock in a rear position and the front ones folding straight out. The front arms also have small standoffs that fold out which act both as antennas as well as landing gear which helps the drone stand slightly off the ground to give clearance for the camera gimbal. The remote control is a sturdy affair, it feels like solid quality, better than any game console gamepad I've ever held, barring perhaps the NES. 
Inside the fold-out arms of the RC, you find the removable sticks for the joysticks. They screw in on top of the controller and unscrew and hide away when you don't need them. This of course makes taking the controller with you a lot more practical, even though it is possible to fly the drone with only your smartphone. Though you do lose out on a lot of the fine control choosing that route. Your phone mounts directly into the controller and it comes with different cables if you have an Android phone as well. The arms comfortably hold your phone, even in a case like this where you have a case on the phone, though a bigger case may struggle. Though because of the case I had to remove the cable from its holder and free float it a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Anyway, before our first flight we really need to charge up the batteries. Simply plug in and fold out your charger and dock each battery into one of the four empty charging bays. The power supply for the charger also has a USB port which you can use to charge your remote control at the same time. This can be charged using the provided USB cable which normally plugs into the drone by using a provided adapter to fit the RC. While it charges we now have ample time to just sit down and study all those manuals. Nah, I'm just kidding, let's go fly this thing! Seriously though, DJI has some really good videos which you should at least watch before your first flight. They go through all the stuff from what's in the box, your first flights and the more advanced flying modes. They are a definite must to watch before your first flight. In the interest of argument and carelessness, I definitely did not watch them though. I really wanted to see how easy it was to just take off and go with the drone. Linking up with the drone couldn't be easier. Just hook up your phone, turn on the drone and the controller, enter the app and it should all link up just fine. For my first flights I did assisted takeoff, which lets the drone take off and hover a short distance above the ground by itself. The controller has two modes to switch in between, one regular flying mode and one sports flying mode. In the regular mode the drone will warn you when you're getting too close to things and move at a more leisurable pace. In the sports mode, this thing throws caution to the wind and hauls ass, which demands that you be a lot more careful when flying. The movements are more jerky and it will buck to and fro to balance itself at higher speeds. I would definitely recommend to wait until you're comfortable with flying the drone before you flip that switch, regardless how tempting it may be. Flying this thing is an absolute joy and thrill. It moves smoothly and as long as you have a good signal between the phone, controller and drone, it will fly smoothly and accurately. You can leave the controller and it will just hover in the air, even in reasonable wind. If you do lose GPS positioning however, in areas with low reception, the drone will start drifting with the wind. It is smart though and it will record the home point so you can simply tap an icon on your phone to tell the drone to return to its home position. Because the range of this drone is quite far, especially in clear areas with good signal strength, this can come in quite useful to help it return to you without you having to remember your way back, or flying up high to get an overhead view to try to see where you are. Due to the possibility of losing it, especially if you for some freak reason lose signal between the RC and your drone, I would highly recommend labeling your drone with your contact info. I have a switch and lever sticker on the top of the drone, as well as full contact info on each of the batteries. I have a friend who lost his drone and got it back only because someone found it, quite some time later, because it had his contact info on it. There are also Bluetooth trackers which you can stick to your drone, which helps to actively track it if you should lose it and it's entirely out of power. The drone has a built-in function to find it through the app, but it will only work as long as it has power though it should remember the last known location of the drone. In contrast, something like a Tile Bluetooth Tracker has a battery life of up to one year. Speaking of battery life, you're not going to get hours of flight from just one battery. Expect to get around 15 minutes of flight time per battery, but in reality expect even less than that as you're not going to fly it until it's at 0%. When the battery reaches 30% your controller is going to start beeping obnoxiously loud, reminding you that it's about to run out of battery. 
When the drone reaches a point where it considers the battery low enough that it won't be able to return if it goes any lower, it will inform me of that and start returning back by itself. I guess you could cancel it, but do you really want to risk it if it will set itself down in an area which you cannot reach? I've seen people having to chase these things up on roofs, borrowing ladders just to get access to the drone. I personally wouldn't recommend it. Because of the battery life, you can see the use for having some extra batteries with you, especially so as it takes almost an hour per battery to charge up again. The charger unfortunately doesn't charge in parallel, so expect around 3 hours to charge 3 batteries. The app is a wealth of information as well, where you can see the stats of your flights, things like for how long you've been flying, how far total flights and all sorts of things like that. The app also features a full video editor, and because it caches video from the drone to your phone, you can use it for putting together some clips if you want to do some quick sharing. I wouldn't use it for any serious video editing, but it is quite handy and it can even create some automated clip compilations based on different moods. Now here is the point where I could continue digging down into all this drone can do, and there is quite a bit. There are a bunch of different shooting modes, there are different video qualities, it can do slow motion and it can do some automated flying modes to create some neat effects. You can shoot full 360 degree panoramas, which it will stitch together automatically, and which can look super neat. There is even one other mode where it will follow you or another subject around automatically, even if you leave the controller behind, within reasonable distance. The active track mode as it's called is a bit finicky though and can easily lose track of you if you disappear for just a fraction of a second. Like here where I go missing under a boom, it stops following me completely and is looking around for me like a lost puppy. You can dive into all of these modes yourself by jumping all around other YouTube videos which cover this in detail. That is not what this video is about. The question from the beginning is still if this is a good drone for a beginner. Let me preface this by saying that I've owned a few cheaper sub $50 drones in the past. and They all fly like crap and they tend to last just a couple of flights before crashing and irrevocably breaking. I'm still very much a beginner at flying these though, and with the DJI Mavic Air I've had so much fun, and I was surprised of how easy it was to get into. There is a lot of hand holding going on, especially as you start out, but it allows you to be a bit less careful than otherwise, which as a pilot is extremely relieving, without feeling limiting at the same time. The cost is quite a bit. At the making of this video, the standard package goes for around $800, and the Fly More combo for around $1000. So it is definitely an investment. I realized within the first hour of flying that just from an entertainment perspective it's definitely worth it. And if you do any type of videography it's definitely going to help you step up your game, even if you don't do the traditional drone style shots. Aside from just having fun, I will use mine mainly for shooting B-roll for my upcoming videos, but it will be a standard thing to pack when I go on hikes or go out to new places. Obviously make sure you're allowed to fly wherever you go, so you don't find yourself breaking local laws. Cost aside, I think this is really the perfect beginner drone. DJI has really done their homework and makes it very easy to just pick up the controllers and get flying. Even though it comes with propeller guards, I honestly have not felt the need for using them. Though I will probably if I go through more dense forests or in situations where I'm reasonably sure I will run into things. For casual flying, even as a beginner, I'd say they're quite superfluous though.
One word of caution though. The propellers, while they do not look like it, are quite sharp, especially when moving at high RPMs during flight. There is a method of landing it by literally grabbing it out of the air and turning off the motors while you're holding it, or flicking it to the side and cause it to turn off the motors automatically. Be very careful if you decide to try this. It sucks tremendously much to get your fingers caught in the blades. Though, despite the blades taking a decent chip out of my fingernail, the propeller blades are entirely undamaged, which I'm quite surprised and impressed by. Again, a huge thanks to Cyberphoto for making this video possible. There's a link to their website in the description, and while I don't get any kickbacks for anything you choose to shop with them, I fully endorse what they do. They're one of the largest suppliers of photographic equipment in all of Scandinavia. They've been around since 1955, and I hope they will be around in many years to come. I will just leave you with some of my favorite shots so far, and hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop a comment below and I will try to answer the best I can. Thank you so much for watching. While the only high-flying things in my previous videos are my ideas, I assure you they're still worth checking out. If you like what you've seen, hit subscribe and enjoy a foray over to Instagram for more regular and casual updates of the life of both switches and levers. Until next time!